Okay, friends, welcome back. We're on part three of our resume adventure. We're almost to the end. Uh, we have talked about the intro, your objective, or the lack thereof, your education, your experience, the meat of your resume, and then finally, we're to the kind of the bottom end of your resume. What goes next? What other sections could there possibly be? The next one down is going to be something like uh, involvement. And this can be either community involvement or campus involvement. Okay, so um, you could put involvement and activities or involvement and organizations. or just organizations or just activities, whatever you choose, okay? But this next section is gonna cover things that you're involved in on campus because one of the things that recruiters are interested in is seeing if you can handle more than one thing. Yes, you have a 4.0 in school, right? But you don't have anything else. So that tells me that you can only handle one thing, right? If you have a 3.0, but you were the president of the Mechanical Engineering Society, and you were in the Space Society, and you participated in um, three honor societies or whatever, right? And you did school, and you still had a good GPA. That's the kind of person, the, the more well-rounded person that these recruiters are looking for. So if you don't have this for your school, if you don't have any kind of involvement or activities, it is time for you to get involved, okay? So what can that be? That can be school student organizations. It can be local community organizations like Habitat for Humanity or an animal shelter or an elementary school as a volunteer or whatever, right? Okay, so just like before, we're gonna do something like this, okay? Let's say that um, uh, you're in the church youth group, okay? And you're a leader, maybe, right? Something like that. Same thing, you know, name of the church, whatever you got there, location. Okay, we're using our same formatting. This is italics. Okay, this is bold over here. And then the dates that you're involved in that. So on church things, okay, be aware that some people you know, like Christians, other people don't like Christians. Some people like Mormons, other people don't like the Mormons. So be aware that if you put religious things on here, it can cause bias for some people. But if that's what you're all about, if that's a big part of your identity, uh, and you want to go to a place that will accept that as a part of who you are, then put it on there, okay? So I'm just, I'm telling you, you make the choice whether to put that on there or not, okay? Um, school activities, what do they like to see? Again, leadership, right? So if I have like um, Society of Mechanical Engineers, right? That's not how you spell that, but that's all right. You get the idea, right? Um, and then underneath that, maybe I have a bullet point that says, um, I was the uh, president, or I was the activities chair, or I was whatever, right? That tells me that you had a leadership role in that organization while going to school and managing your classes, okay? So it's a real way to tell me about you being able to handle more than one thing at a time, and that you're in, you're in a leadership position. That's important to recruiters. It's important to companies, okay? And again dates over here, okay? So all of your community involvement, organizations in the community and in school, you can put those on here. Be careful about acronyms, okay? Because if you put, you know, A-B-A-C-E, and then you put president, and then what is that? I've never even heard of that. You, you might want to, for those kind of things that are uncommon, you might want to spell them out. This is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or whatever it is, right? So be careful with acronyms that you, but don't give me a ton of information. People will start, here's what I did in this organization. One, two, three bullet points, right? 
don't do that because that you've got all your resume instead of taking it up in the experience section where the real meat of your resume should be you're spending all of your resume space talking about your campus involvement again one or two lines max on a, on a campus or a community involvement thing and then if they want to talk more to you talk, talk to them about it in the uh, interview situation okay the last section here is honors and awards okay so you'll be able to list down here any honors and awards that you have okay the Bob Johnson I can't even spell today um, scholarship maybe right okay uh, Dean's list president's list um, any other you know outstanding student of the week or whatever right it was the student of the month the uh, whatever other kind of honors that you might have down here you can put that in honors and awards down here and then again dates over here in our date column okay same thing a line goes all the way across to separate that next section okay so just like we did before now this is not there's not a whole lot of detail here. This is just one at a time. So tell me about, you know, this scholarship, presidential scholarship at my university or whatever, right? List those things, dean's list, president's list, whatever you got, and that's it. So this isn't expected to be a huge section here either, okay? And then finally, okay, I'm going to tell you one more, and this is kind of, you can put this on there or you don't have to. I personally like this. I'd say if you don't have room for it, if your resume is super cram-packed full, don't put this next one on there. I kind of like it, but I, I would just call this interests. Okay? And interest needs to be one line only. That's it, okay? And maybe that's golf. Um, classic cars. Motorcycles. Rock climbing, right? Whatever it is. Okay? Just so that if, if an interviewer or somebody takes you to an interview, and that's the very last thing on there, right? I'm going to hire somebody, maybe you, that's going to come to work with our team. Do you fit in with our team? Do you have the same kind of interest that our team has? Um, I wouldn't put, like, crocheting sweaters for my cat, right? Don't, don't put that in there, okay? So... But if you have things that other people typically enjoy doing, this would tell them in an interview that, you know, hey, you, you like classic cars? Do you, do you have one? What, what, what do you have? Well, let's talk about that. Versus getting one of those dumb canned interview questions like, if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be, right? So this just nothing more than a conversation starter in an interview. And again, if you have room for this, if your resume is super cram-packed, this is the one that you can leave off. But I kind of like that one for um, if you're in an interview that gives that it just it's easier in an interview if you're in a conversation versus I don't have anything to talk about. So why don't you ask me all of your canned interview questions, right? OK, so that gets it right. Top to bottom, the whole resume. Now I'll give you an example of that. So I'll post that right here. You can see an example of this last section that we're talking about. OK. So, Final notes on the resume. Number one, this resume should be no longer than a page, okay? You're a student. You don't have a, the world's, you know, most amount of um, experience. There's no need to have more than a page, okay? If, you're, if you have more than a page, you better be an old guy like me. You had nine jobs, and you, then you have, you know, a packet. But for students, one page. Number two read it, read it again, and then read it one more time. You cannot, and then have somebody else read it. You cannot have a misspelled word or a, a sentence that doesn't make sense. Another thing that I have my students do is I give it to them, their resume, I give it back to them, and I say, do me a favor, read that out loud, and they read it out loud, and they're like, that doesn't make any sense at all, okay? So reading it, and then when you hear it out loud, you're like, hmm, that doesn't, it needs to read well. It needs to make sense when you read it out loud, okay? 
So no misspelled words, no grammar, because that tells me, hey, this person doesn't care. They didn't read over it. Maybe they're not that intelligent after all. They can't even spell whatever it is, right? So be sure there's no mistakes in your resume. That's a biggie. And so one final note is like in, in this section here, involvement in activities, don't try and pad that. Don't put that I'm a member of this society, a member of that society, a member of that society. That tells me that you knew that you had a job fair coming up and all you did is you went out and signed up for five of societies and you paid your dues, but you don't, you don't have any involvement in those. And don't put anything on your resume, okay? And I see this all the time, right? They'll put stuff in there like a, a class, right? Fluent in whatever, right? Uh, C++ programming. And I'm like, are you really good at it? Well, no, but I had a class in it one time. Like if I gave you a problem, could you write a program for it? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to study about that. If you can't answer a question about the, the thing that you have on your resume, or if you're afraid to get a question about it, you better not put it on there. If you put something on your resume, it needs to be something that you're good at, okay? So don't try and pad it because if somebody calls you out in, a, in an interview and asks you about one of those things on your resume and you can't answer it, then all your credibility gone, okay? And it gets tossed out. So I hope this is able to help you get your resume completed and in shape, okay? On the next video, I'm going to talk to you about how to work a job fair. So once you do show up at a job fair, you've got your fancy resume. How do I work the job fair? What do I do? Who do I go talk to, right? So stay tuned and I'm going to help you on that too. Okay, see you next time.